been quite a sight this morning. The moment of peak totality, they're called it, for this morning, yes. Super Blue Blood Moon. And this happened just moments ago. It's pretty awesome. Ooh, that is beautiful. It's really pretty. We have correspondents across the country covering this event. So let's check in first with Nick Watt, who is at the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. And Nick, I know you have a huge crowd there with you. I mean, I think it's the best seat in the house. There is about a thousand people who got up stupid early this morning to watch this here in Los Angeles. Of course, all the way up the coast and in Hawaii as well. And I'm joined by two young fans of this deep, dark moon, Priscilla and Hank. Guys, how excited are you? Super excited. Super excited. Hank even wore his NASA sweatshirt for the occasion. Yeah. What do you think, Hank? It's a good night, isn't it? It's a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there is also some superstition that surrounds this, guys. Some people think that this is the moon and the sun fighting and that we here on Earth must come together as a good example. Other people say that it's a sign of things that are going to change on Earth. And Buddhists believe that whatever you do during this moon will be magnified tenfold. So, guys, <laughs> be good. Wow. Be good. Wow. All right. That is good advice <laughs> indeed, Did you see Nick. the little girl? G she was Ginger, like, yeah. Ginger's over there going, thank goodness I'm not having my baby on the full moon. I have well, ten more. Well, <laughs> well, well, I've been having oh. some feelings this morning feel, already. And I know what they say about the full moon yes, and, and, and labor. And we will see Ooh. in a little bit. Right. The morning just got better. <laughs> yes, it did. Well, <laughs> yeah. we're going to get more. On the science behind I'm dropping my card here. We're gonna get more on the science behind this lunar phenomenon. Astrophysicist Hakeem Olusheyi uh, is here nice to join us. Oh, and, and thank you for joining us. And, and so Hakeem. Yes. Everyone, what 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 makes today's lunar eclipse so special from any other? Okay, so today we're experiencing the third in a series of super moons, mm -hmm. and it's also the second full moon of the month, which makes it a blue moon. And because the Earth is passing into the the, the moon is passing into the Earth shadow, that makes it a total lunar eclipse. Okay, tell yeah. us what it means to have a super moon, and, right. and also what's happening during an eclipse. Yeah, so what makes the moon super is that it's bigger and brighter. And the reason why it's bigger and brighter is because it's closer to Earth. The moon isn't always the same distance as it orbits the Earth. Sometimes it's closer, sometimes it's farther away. The closest we call perigee. So when there's a full moon at perigee, we call that a super moon. And, yeah. <laughs> and also, when the moon passes into the Earth's shadow, that's what happens during a total lunar eclipse. So you might ask, why isn't the moon completely blacked out? Why yeah. is it red? Well, the reason why is because the same reason why we have a blue sky and we have red sunsets. The Earth's atmosphere bends the light around the Earth to make it fall on the moon, and the blue light gets scattered out going in all directions, and the red light makes it through, so the moon appears red. I tell you what, astrophysicist, he's like a dancing around. <laughs> You're a super astrophysicist. How about that? Thank you. Right, Akeem, right. Thank, thank you so much. We appreciate that. And the audience, we all learned a little something on that. And we're going to go to Kana Whitworth, on the USS Hornet, and she's in San Francisco Bay. And Kana, we hear people have actually spent the night on board waiting for the eclipse. That's right. This is so cool. So I'm on board this aircraft carrier, and people actually stayed the night here. They slept in the barracks to wake up with the crew and view this super blue blood moon. Uh, this family spent the whole night here. I actually heard you just telling your boys you're sitting on a runway right now, <laughs> which is absolutely true. You thought the barracks were a little bit uncomfortable? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, a little uncomfortable, he said. What did you think? Uh... I couldn't sleep. He couldn't <laughs> sleep. But they loved this super blue blood moon. And your favorite part of it? Uh, it was the um, when it started turning red. Yeah. When it started turning red. Yeah. Oh, but you kind of like the eclipse part the best, yeah. right? Oh, that's so fun. And this woman right here says she hasn't been up this early in 40 years since she had her son. Um, so, Ginger, we're all thinking about you out She's here, I guess I have to say. Uh, it is absolutely a spectacular experience, though, Michael. All right, Kayla, no. thank you so much. Look, like, look everybody's up early at the launch. I'm, I'm, I'm over here checking on Ginger. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying <laughs> my best friend's an OB, and she said anecdotally that in her two decades of practicing yeah. that more babies are born around a full moon. So. I gave birth on a full moon. Yeah. You did. I didn't get a room in the hospital because they said everybody was going Because everybody was there. Full moon. So we're wow. going to be watching Ginger closely. In the meantime, let's go out to Clayton Sandell at Bluff Lake Nature Center in Denver, Colorado. And Clayton, tell us what's happening there. 
Hey guys, it's about 34 degrees, but we've still got hundreds of hardcore astronomy fans out here. The moon is actually behind a cloud right now, but we're hoping it comes back out. We've been watching it all morning, and I've got Phil Plate here. You know him as the Bat Astronomer on Twitter and uh, from SciFi.com. Uh, tell me, why is the moon red? What is what is what accounts for that? Well, if you're standing on the moon, what you're seeing is the Earth blocking the sun, and the sunlight is coming through the Earth's atmosphere and it's turning red, just like the sun turns red at sunset. Right. And so the, only the red light is getting through. And so if you're standing on the moon, what you're really seeing are all the sunrises and all the sunsets on the Earth happening at the same time. And unlike a solar eclipse, a lot of people can see a lunar eclipse. That's right, a solar eclipse is when the moon blocks the sun, the shadow's on the Earth, and you have to be right there at the right time to see it. In this case, right. hey, the moon's up in the sky, the Earth's blocking it, everybody can see it. All right, perfect. The sun is starting to rise, the moon is gonna be setting soon. Guys, we got a few more minutes to enjoy it here. Back to you. All right, enjoy it indeed. I want to say thanks to Clayton, Kana, and Nick for bringing us that. Yes. Thank you. And you'll get another chance to see a super blood blue, super blue blood moon. That's the first time you've messed that up. Missed. I'm going to give you that. I know. You've I was thinking about times. Taylor Swift, wow. bad blood, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it in the United States, but it's going to be exactly 19 years. Okay. From wow. today, okay. The next one happens January 31st, 2037. So your child will be 19 years old. <laughs> well, there we go. Born <laughs> <laughs> today. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here, to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the morning on GMA.